Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, what's up? My name is VNA Strick. Thank you so much for being here. So today I decided to buy every drugstore blush that I could find and review them for you guys. I've been testing them out for the past couple weeks and I have my thoughts on the best and the worst and the best for who and for what. I also have swatches for you guys on my hand as well as on my face. So I really hope that you guys find this video helpful and I hope that you enjoy it. If you do enjoy this video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to join my squad. Let's get into it. Alrighty guys, so let's get into it. I think I have about eight or nine blushes to get to. I do have a lot that worked out for me, some didn't, but I also have some that are good for oily skin, dry skin, and deeper skin, lighter skin. So I really try to get you a lot of information on these blushes. I'm gonna go through them pretty quickly just because we do have a lot of blushes and I don't want this video to be too long for you guys, but let's get started. I'm not gonna go in any order. I'm just gonna pick a random one and talk about it and let you guys know if I like it. So this is the Burt's Bees. All Aglow Lip and Cheek Tint. I do have the shade Delia Dew. I try to get kind of different shades. I didn't want to get like the same kind of shade for each blush. So this is like the more red one. This is as much product as this has. And this is $12.99 and it is 100% natural. So this is described as a hydrating lip and blush dual stick that delivers beautiful color that gives you a healthy looking natural glow. It is packed with jojoba seed oil, sunflower seed oil, and a hydrating core made of coconut oil. I personally didn't love this. One thing I will say is that it smells absolutely amazing. It does have a strong smell of like fruit punch. And even though it is 100% natural and there's a bunch of good ingredients in it, it is way too oily and greasy for me. And it also, as you can see in the video, it doesn't really give that much pigment. It is $12.99, so it is one of the more expensive ones from the drugstore. And I just don't love it. I think that it's way too dewy for me. It shows up a little bit more when you do have foundation on, but it is oily, so it's not gonna be wearing on your foundation very good. And on the bare skin, it doesn't show up as much. For the price and the wear and the finish, it's not my favorite at all. I think that this would be a really good blush stick that would be for like a young girl or boy first starting to wear makeup. Like if your kid asks you for a blush and you don't want them to wear too much makeup or you still want them to look natural or maybe if you like looking that natural, um, maybe try this out. But just know that you'll get a lot more dewiness than pigment. This is definitely more for a dewy finish with a hint of color. Um, so it's just not my favorite. It definitely doesn't pack a punch for me and it's a little bit too expensive compared to other ones that are even better and they just have more pigment. Not my favorite, but if you are looking for something very, very natural but super, super dewy and you like good ingredients like jojoba oil and sunseed oil and coconut oil, then this would be a good one for you. But for me, it's definitely a pass. Okay, so next we're gonna go to Revlon. This is also going to be a stick and this is how much product it has. So this is the Revlon Photo Ready Insta Blush Stick. And I got the shade 330 Nude Kiss. Uh, unfortunately, there is only four shades and this is actually the darkest shade. So this is definitely not for deep skin tones at all because this is a pretty shade, but it is pretty sheer on me. So it's just described as a sheer blendable blush. I don't necessarily love it because it does look really pretty when applied, but it does kind of blend out a lot, but you can build it. It looks really pretty on the skin as well as on foundation, and this shade is really pretty. It is more of a satin finish, not matte or dewy. The only reason why I don't really love it is just because this is the darkest shade, and you do have to build it a lot to get a lot of pigment. So if you're any darker than me, I definitely don't suggest this, but if you are lighter than me, I like it. It's okay. The only thing is, like, if I 
put it on my skin. It looks like it's gonna be really pretty, but once you blend it out, it's just super, super sheer. So if you're into a super sheer blush, but you like a lot of dew, then go for the Burt's Bee ones. But if you want something more satin, not super dewy or matte, then this would be a good one. If you are looking at these blushes and there's a specific shade that you really like, I say go for it. Just know that it is gonna have to be buildable, but it actually wears for a long time. It just didn't wow me, but I do like it. By the way, something that I did notice is that every time I apply my blush with a brush, it definitely comes out way more pigmented than with a sponge or a finger. Okay, so next we have CoverGirl. So these are the CoverGirl Clean Fresh Cream Blushes, and I do have the shade Butterflies as well as the shade Ripe and Ready. So Butterflies is a more like mauve tone and Ripe and Ready is the berry tone. These are very interesting. So the pros are that they're very pigmented and they last a really long time but the cons are that they're very metallic and they do dry pretty quickly so you need to work one side of the face at a time so they do have four different shades and right now it's on sale for $7.69 but usually it's $10.99 at Ulta so it is described as a hyaluronic acid blush that hydrates and plumps the cheeks for a fresh dewy glow. I think that these would be a really good highlighter for super, super deep skin tone. Like this would be a really pretty rose gold highlight if you're very, very deep and it lasts a really long time. For me personally, I don't love metallic on my cheeks. It's just, this is past dewy. Like this is literally metallic. And I don't love that, but it does last a really long time and it's super pigmented. So if you're looking for a blush that is also going to be a highlight, then you might really like this. But just remember that with any kind of highlighter, it's gonna emphasize your pores, textures, and or acne. So if you do put that everywhere like me, like I put blush, it will emphasize any imperfections that you might have. But if you're just looking for a super pigmented, super long wearing metallic blush, you're gonna like it. And also again, let me just say this one more time. If you have super, super deep skin tone, I would try one of these out as a highlighter. I really think that that might look beautiful on you. Okay, so let's move over to Wet n Wild. So this is the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Makeup Stick Brush and I have the shade Floral Majority. This is $4.49 at Ulta. I wanted to tell you guys that I absolutely love their contour sticks. I'm actually wearing it right now. So it is described as a one swipe of a stick, naturally flush cheeks, or get an insanely glowy complexion. So the pros about this is that it is really pigmented, really creamy, really easy to blend out. And it is more on the dewy side, but not obnoxiously dewy. I actually really enjoy that. It's not as dewy as the Burt's Bees one. This is a glowy blush stick without being greasy. And it blends out really, really nicely. It looks good on the bare skin as well as on foundation. The only downside is that this is definitely not deep skin friendly. This is actually the deepest shade and they only have two shades. Even though this works for me, when you do blend it out, it does blend out pretty light. So if you are my skin tone, you wanna build it, but if you're any deeper than me, this is just not gonna work out for you. Don't you worry, I do have a blush palette for deeper skin tones, but just know that if you're any deeper than me, this probably won't work out for you. But if you are my skin tone or lighter, I really think that you're gonna love these, and I highly encourage you to also try the bronzer sticks to contour or to cream bronze. Okay, so this one is called the e.l.f. Monochromatic Blush Stick, and it's only $4. This is in the shade Luminous Berry. It only has 0.155 ounces. This is as much as it has. It is only $4, but it is pretty pigmented, but I just can't get past the fact that it has actual glitter particles in it. I like the formula itself. It's very pigmented, very blendable, but the finish is pretty metallic and it also has glitter in it. So I that it just does not look very good on my skin. Again, all this metallic and glittery, luminous kind of deal 
will be emphasizing any texture on your skin. I will say I haven't tried any other shades other than Luminous Berry, so there might be some without glitter. I just wanna let you guys know that the Luminous Berry one, if you're into berry tones, just know that it has glitter and it is metallic. It is a multi-use stick, so you can use this as eyeshadow or on your lips, but just know that for blush, if you're not into metallic and glittery, then you're not gonna like it. So it's definitely not my favorite, but I really do wanna try out some other shades in case they don't have glitter because the formula is actually pretty pigmented and it blends really nice. It's just a finish that I'm not obsessed with. Okay, so sticking to e.l.f., I do wanna give you guys a good, a good product to look at. So this is the e.l.f. Cream Blush Palette, and this is a darker one. It's in the shade Bold. It retails for $8, which makes each shade $2, which is awesome, and it does have .43 ounces. I really, really like this. I love how sleek the compact is. I like how it looks. I like that it has a really good mirror and it has four different shades. I definitely grabbed one a little bit too dark for me, but I'm glad that I did because I definitely think that this is a really good deeper skin tone choice because not only are these blushes super dark and vibrant, but they're also very pigmented. I think this is probably the most pigmented formula compared to all these blushes. And the cool thing about this is that you can go in with a really light hand and the pigment still packs a punch. So on the website, it just says that this creates a buildable color for a flushed glow. It has creamy texture, easy to blend pigmented colors that are buildable. You could make them buildable, but just remember going with a very, very light hand. The first time I tried this I definitely put way too much on but I really love the concept of this again remember they do have a lighter one for you if you are medium to light skin tones but for medium deep to dark deep I genuinely think that this will work out for you maybe not this shade if you're super dark but these two are stunning they're very nice very pigmented these are more of a satin finish again not super matte or super glowy and they look beautiful on bare skin as well as on foundation. You can also mix them. Like I've mixed these two shades together to create my perfect shade. So keep that in mind. I definitely um, give this one a thumbs up. This is a really good buy and I just feel like a lot of people don't talk about it because it's actually an older product. But now that everyone's obsessed with the cream blushes, I really think that this deserves a little bit more attention. Okay, so next let's talk about Maybelline. So this is the Maybelline Cheek Heat gel cream blush and this is the shade nude burn so on ulta this goes for seven dollars and 99 cents and this is described as a sheer flush of color with oil-free water-based formula that glides onto the skin leaving behind a soft natural looking dewy finish so it is oil-free so those of you who have oilier skin it is oil-free um this is not my favorite just because it almost blends out into nothing. I will say the texture is actually really nice. It's super lightweight and nice gel formula and it blends out very easily, but it almost blends out into nothing. So again, this is almost like the Burt's Bee situation, but this isn't greasy like the Burt's Bees one. So if you are looking for a very, very light touch of color, then you might really like this. This is dewy, but since it's gel, it's not oily. So if you do have oily skin and you want to have a flush of color but you still like the dew, then you might really like this. It's just, it's not my favorite compared to all these. By the way, at the end of the video, I will show you guys what like my top contenders are. I don't know, it's not bad, but it doesn't have that much pigment. I definitely have another one that I like way better. Um, but again, if you're just looking for something really natural that is oil-free and gel-like consistency, super lightweight and dewy, but not greasy, then you might like this. But if you are looking for something that's a little bit more pigmented and long-lasting, I do have that for you. Alrighty, guys. So we have the Milani Cheek Kiss Blush, and this is in the shade Rose Romance. I believe this is the highest-reviewed one on Ulta. It is a $9.99. It is described as a sheer but buildable formula that lets you control the flush factor easy to apply formula with skin loving ingredients like pomegranate rose extract and watermelon it has six shades and it is vegan and cruelty free
property. I love this. I think that if you're deciding whether to go from the Maybelline one to the Milani, if you prefer more pigment, I definitely think that the Milani one is the one to go. I think that overall, most people will like the Milani one because it's pigmented, but not overly pigmented like the CoverGirl one or the e.l.f. one, but it still gives you a beautiful beautiful look. It's actually the shade that I am wearing. I did set it with a little bit of powder blush though. It's a thin formula, but it does pack a lot of pigment for the thinness of the formula. It is more of a satin finish, so this is going to be good for a lot of skin types, and they do have a couple shades that are very pretty. So this actually is my top contender. Um, spoiler alert. This is just my go-to. It has been for a while now. I like to put it on the back of my hand, grab it with a brush, and just build it up on either my bare skin or foundation. Overall, this is just a good one that I think would work for a lot of people. So we have two more blushes to talk about. I will give you guys my top contenders at the end, and I think I'm gonna swatch them all on my arm and name them so you can kind of see the shades and how they look against each other. And hopefully that helps you figure out what shade you want. So this is the Flower Beauty Blush Bomb Color Drops, and I do have the shade Cinnamon. So this is also only $9.99, and it is highly rated at Ulta. So this is described as a fresh healthy glow in an instant. It is silky and lightweight and it has a radiant texture. So I will say this shade Cinnamon, it's a little bit too brown for me. I prefer a pinker blush and I also think that I'm a little too tan for this blush. But on lighter skin tones, I think this is actually the perfect fall blush for you guys. So just keep that in mind. If I had to compare this to any of these, it would be the hotter older sister of the Maybelline one. This has a similar consistency, which I actually really like the consistency of the Maybelline one. I just hate that it doesn't have that much pigment. This is like the same consistency, almost like a gel-like consistency. It almost feels like creamy and light, but not greasy at all, but it does have more pigment than the Maybelline one. So if you are looking for similar formula but more pigment go for the flower beauty ones they're absolutely stunning i really do like this compared to the milani one it doesn't have as much of a pigment punch but it is buildable and it is a lot more lightweight and a little bit more dewy so it really kind of depends what you're going for but they're both amazing and lastly, I do have a blush that is more of a matte finish for all of you that have oily skin. So this is the NYX Sweet Cheeks Soft Cheek Tint, and this one's in the shade Nude Tude. This is $9, and it also has really good reviews on Ulta. So this is described as a buildable cream blush, weightless, blendable, soft blush color, precise doe foot applicator, and it is cruelty free. So what I really like about this is, first of all, it does come with an applicator. It almost looks like a liquid lipstick because it does have that pointy doe foot, which I actually can use this on my lips as well. So this is actually very moussey and matte, but it does blend really well. This is for my oily guys and girls out there that are afraid of cream blush or they just have not worked out with cream blush. This is a moussey matte texture. It is super lightweight. It looks beautiful on bare skin as well as on foundation. And this is definitely very buildable, so don't be afraid of it. Even though it is buildable and it blends nice, I still think that you should use the applicator on the back of your hand and then pick it up. Um, if you dot it straight on your foundation, I have noticed that sometimes it'll pick it up a little bit. I really like this. I really like the shade as well. They do have a couple shades to choose from. Compared to all these other blushes that I've shown you, I definitely think this is the most oil skin friendly cream blush that I've found. So I really, really like this. So if I had to pick my top favorite ones, it would be the Milani one, the Flower Beauty, and the NYX. And kind of funny, but if you have drier skin and you want dewiness, use a Flower Beauty one. If you have normal skin and you just want pigment and blendability, use the Milani one. And if you need something that won't break up with your oily skin, then the NYX one. So 
Accidentally, I picked some for every skin type. Other than that, I really do have an honorable mention for the Wet n Wild blush stick. This is really nice, super easy to use, and super affordable. If you have a smaller budget, I would go for the Wet n Wild one. Just remember, it doesn't get any darker than this. So I'm gonna give you guys some swatches of all the shades. Hopefully this will help you guys out. I tend to go for more either berry tones, pinky tones, or mauve tones. But this time around, I did try to go for a warmer brown or a pale taupe or a reddish one, just to try them all out and give you guys a little bit more choices to look at. But here are all the shades next to each other. I hope that these shade comparisons help you guys out. This is the end of the video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you like these videos where I condense drugstore products in categories, I do have a best drugstore foundation video that I can link down below, as well as a best drugstore concealer video. Again, they're both both with swatches on the face and on the hands. So if you guys are into that, I think I'm gonna make a playlist for it, but I will link it all down below. And let me know what products you guys wanna see next, like what best of product category do you guys wanna see next? I would love to know. And also if you guys have any questions, just comment it down below. I try to get to all your comments. I love you guys so, so much. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.